This is Author Spotlight with the Fabricating Fiction Podcast. The Path of the Titan, The Proving, book number one by John Bennett. Prologue, 17 years ago. Sing, dang it! 3,000 credits for this overpriced piece of garbage and it crashes again. <sighs> Christian rolls back in his desk chair and lets out a groan as he waits for his computer to restart for the third time today. The two moons gleam through his office window. The stars soothe him like a warm blanket after coming in from a snowy day. He flicks his wrist to open his palm phone and reads through the half a dozen missed messages from his wife. She went into labor an hour ago and is asking him if he left work. I promised her I'd meet her at the hospital, but the same dang computer keeps crashing and stopping me from finishing my work. I'm just about to log off and say hex it, but... I'm conflicted on the time I could be losing on my project. While his computer slowly awakens once again, he slides himself back into his work. He skims over the endless notes and calculations in his notebook for his subdermal parasite-inducing nanorobotic enhancers project, also known as Project Spine. If I can perfect the nanites and develop them properly, my project alone could put harmony back in the United Territories. My home territory of Harmony has been looked at as a plague by the other territories of the world for nearly 200 years. Trade routes were demolished from Dalton, imports from Alana were seized, and they were left in the dark to rot and prey on each other to survive. Spine will be exactly what this territory needs to show the Sovereign that we are civilized, and Harmony can receive the resources to modernize. Maybe then I can get that stupid pitch out of my head. Project Spine is a spinal implant that is surgically implanted into the brain stem. Once induced, millions of microscopic nanites will deploy into the body and through the cerebral cortex of the patient's brain. Their job is to split neurotransmitters and increase the reproduction of red blood cells, then divide and morph into gray matter to create a faster, more ingenious subject over time. Great pitch. Now the only thing that is stopping me and causing the countless delays is that all my test subjects have been murdered by it. My nanites are freakishly adaptive, but also extremely picky when it comes to feeding. They feed on stem cells, the life force of the human body. Without stem cells, humans can't heal. And eventually, the nanites will literally eat the host from the inside out. Knowing that, there's no way I can show this to the Sovereign until I can find some way to develop a stem cell multiplier. To do that, I need outside help. Ah! Finally! My computer's back on! A cute picture of Christian's wife, Isabella, appears in a small circle above his login. Her smile is infectious, and always brings a smile to his face like a hypnotic spell. As the prototype loads and codes start flooding through his screen, work is finally back underway. Just as he's back in the groove, his palm phone rings. He ignores it, guessing it's Isabella. If my wife needs me, she will call the secretary. I can't get this work done if she keeps distracting me. His phone goes off again. He looks to see who it is, and it's an unknown outside number. Sing! Dang it! Are you serious? This better be good. He flicks his hand to open the phone and answer the call. Christian Paul, who is this? Hello, old friend. Late night as usual. Christian would recognize that voice anywhere if only to avoid it. The voice of Alpha Titan Robert Fox, the commander of one of Tyke's military legions and viceroy of the Two Moons. He is also the unforgivable emancipated half-brother who forged his way into the military at the illegal age of 16. What do you want, Robbie? He hates being called that. You know exactly what I want, Christian. Let's be frank. You know I am calling. My brother knows about Spine, and has been trying to buy it off me for about five years now. Except, what he wants to do is change my invention to create super soldiers for a worldwide planetary defense system. He talks about making the world safer, but I know him. He wants to rule. He wants to be sovereign. As much as I agree with his opinion about our absolute ruler, I cannot in good faith sell my patent to a sociopathic narcissist who will use it for treason. Can't say I know any Franks, Robbie, 
but if you don't mind, I am extremely busy. My wife just went into labor an hour ago, and I don't have time for one of your monologues. Good day. Do you honestly believe you could do this by yourself? Aren't you tired? What does Isabella think of your late nights? It must be a real strain on your marriage, huh? My marriage is perfectly fine. You don't need spine to see that your marriage is a car crash on the skyline. It's just a matter of time before it all comes crashing down in a ball of fire. Oh, and that baby of yours is just Did you call me to insult me or to pitch a partnership? Because I really do not have time for this. Don't let him get under your skin, Christian. Don't let him. Stay calm. Of course not. <clears throat> Alright, let's get down to brass tacks. Project Spine. Name your price. Any price, Christian. It is yours. You can move out of that wretched house of yours in that saint-forgotten territory. Come work with me on the moon and start a new life with your wife. Hey, you could even drop Isabella. Or maybe live the polygamy life if you fancy having your options open. <laughs> you know I do. You'll have the money for it, though, that's for sure. Let me make this perfectly clear. No, let me be perfectly clear with you, Christian. I'll not interfere at all. I'll give you a team of engineers just as ambitious as you. I have all the resources and credits to finance any experiments or hypotheses you might have. You finish the project here, we'll throw it into a few Jimbos and see if it works. If not, then there's no problem. Lunans are reproducing like Saint Forsaken Avats up here. Life ain't all bad either. We got some of the brightest minds you could ask for to teach your children. Come on, I'll even name a school after you, huh? How does that sound? This project is mine, Robert. I didn't make this to wage intergalactic war. I Who said anything about war, Christian? He loves the sound of his own voice, doesn't he? I hear you, Christian. Truly I do, but... Don't you understand that you can't do this alone anymore? Think of a sole military corps filled with men and women with superhuman abilities. Battle suits won't have to be equipped with rune. The military would be unstoppable. I can finally stop trade with those land-loving Daltonese, and we can rebuild harmony and all that nonsense, but you're wasting the potential of this, don't you see? Forget about harmony. This could prepare us for aliens. Aliens. My brother was always obsessed with the idea of intergalactic species. That's why he left for the military at such a young age. He wanted to be the first to find aliens. Humans traveled two light years to escape Earth and search for new life in other galaxies. They landed on Tyke and had done nothing to explore the rest of the galaxy. You and I both know I can and will do anything to get to that tech, Christian. Stop being selfish. Jingadi can shine a new light on this project of yours and you're squandering this chance for us. You think Silva will give you another chance after what you showed him last time? His office still smells of the disgrace you left in there from your last failed attempt. Keep that in mind when Isabella leaves you and Carson resents you because you didn't see a good opportunity when it landed on your face. You smug son of a... Wait... Why did he say that name? What does Dad have to do with this? Oh, you didn't see him yet? <laughs> He's all over her, Nova Page. Congratulations, brother. Family is such a precious thing. It's a lot of responsibility. A whole lot to gain and a whole lot to lose, too. Too bad Dad didn't see it that way. Anger and rage fill Christian's body and explode through his hands as he rips his headset off and throws it across the room. He curses and screams at it as it hits the wall. Dr. Paul, is everything okay? Oh, uh, Janet, I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone was still here. Yes, yeah, everything's fine. Christian collects himself and walks over to the door to pick up his communicator. Please, if you don't mind, Janet, I have work to finish. My wife went into labor an hour ago, and Dr. I need Paul, to- Dr. Paul, that was four hours ago. But, um, your wife just called and left a message. Shall I send it to your communicator? Yes, please. 
He rushes to put his headset back on, and Janet sends him the message. With a click, it transfers from her headset to his. Christian can't help but break into tears as he hears his wife's panting voice. Hi. I guess you're busy. But if you care to know, it's a boy. A beautiful, perfect, and healthy baby boy. He's even got your nose. I told the nurse we were going to name him Carson after your father. Just call me. Call me when you can. I love you. Thank you for joining us on Author Spotlight with the Fabricating Fiction Podcast. The Path of a Titan, The Proving by John Bennett can be found on Amazon.com. Please follow the links in the description below. Thank you.